Hey guys, welcome back to Cam's Custom Backgrounds. As you can see, my bench is empty. Um, I haven't had a chance to actually clean it up after the last one has left, but the reason it's empty is because we have this monster. This one here is a 900 wide, 1200 tall, and about 600 deep, I believe. It's the Reptile 1 uh, Melamine enclosure. This thing is brand new. It's still got plastic on the side. Uh, I literally uh, put it together with, uh, with the bloke in my driveway. So it's literally brand new. Um, this one's going to be a pretty interesting build. Um, got some MDF, 16mm MDF here. Uh, going to trial some little brackets and things like that just to hold the shelving in place. Uh, usually I would screw through the side if it was on a white melamine or something like that that you could put caps over nicely. But actually when you take this plastic off these, they're um, they're actually like glossy, a glossy melamine. So you can't really get a cap that suits well. So what I'm gonna do is use those brackets, put them internally, foam them in. You won't see anything out of the ordinary. It's gonna be a sandy color. Similar to the um, uh, Marvel Children's Python slash Big Pygmy Bearded Dragons one that I did a couple of videos ago. It's going to be the same sort of concept as that. Um, real sort of lighter colour. I want to go something a bit lighter with this one purely because it's a black tank. You go and put you know, a darker or a, a grey sort of in this tank, it's going to look very gloomy. So... We went with something a bit brighter. But yeah, I'm gonna start cutting this melon or this uh, MDF down over here and start getting these shelves and stuff fixed in. Alright guys, didn't film it because it's a bit hard to get the, the camera set up in here, plus I've got to get a light set up so I can actually see, but um, there's the shelves fixed in place, by no means is it glamorous right now, did just chuck this in, you know, it's, it doesn't have to look pretty at all, so this is all going to be hidden, it's just there to add some support to the ledges and things like that, I did go and cut some shapes on it, get a rough idea of what the uh, what the shelving and everything is going to look like. That one up there, I did just cut it. Just cut it off a little bit just because I can do all the shaping and everything with the foam. So I'm not overly fussed about that. But that's where we're at now. And next step is to start chucking some um, inso foam together and stuff to start building this cave. See how that goes. All right, as you can see, I have made quite the mess. Um, but I have made some progress. So I've got some uh, some of the insulation panels there glued down onto um, the Miller MDF shelf, um, top and bottom of it. And you can see under there that I've cut the slots out for the shelving brackets. And then I've just gone and... Uh, throwing some insulation and stuff in behind. This was where the cave's gonna be. And um, this is the panel, the panel that's gonna go over the front of it, just like that. But um, I took the time to just put some foam in there, get a bit of shaping going on the back of it um, before I actually close it in. Uh, because getting in there to carve it out later is gonna be an absolute nightmare. Probably should do the cave down the bottom tonight, but it's currently 10.30 and it's time for bed.
Alright guys, here I'm using a polyurethane uh, Gorilla Glue. It's a foaming glue. Um, this I found works the best to uh, glue the foam together. I use it for pretty much every aspect of gluing. You can stick it to the metal mine, stick it to the glass, whatever. Um, and it foams up, you can carve it back. So it works out really well, and it dries pretty quickly. So, um, yeah, just here, chucking the glue on, uh, chuck your piece in place, uh, wet one surface, the moisture helps activate um, the glue. I'm just using some bamboo skewers here. Uh, this is purely to help hold everything in place. Uh, while the glue goes off, it will allow you to move the cave around or move your pieces around um, and not have to worry about your top moving. Um, I'm doing it in this case so that uh, the top part of the cave and the bottom part of the cave stay connected and I can not have to stress if I bump it and I can continue to work in the enclosure while the glue is going off. Alright guys, here we are, uh, finished carving the top half, uh, inside the cave there, all the underside of the top shelf, I've gone and filled a couple of these little holes, things like that around the place, any of the black that you can see in the background here, that'll all get covered up with pointing. Um, <clears throat> again, once I've finished the entire carving and everything, I'll go through and clean up all the edges nicely. But I've um, just gone ahead and thrown some some foam up underneath the, the right-hand corner there. Uh, I do have to go through and pack the bottom up. I'm going to go and just lift up these corners here. Otherwise, the cave sits down inside the substrate, which um, makes it a bit hard when you're... You know, you've got to pull all the substrate out of the way to be able to remove the cave. So, as you've seen in the past that I've done, I've gone and put a bit of a platform for them to sit on and lifts that cave up a little bit. And, um, yeah, I've sort of got a bit of a shelf going on here that once the cave gets lifted up, we'll carve it down into it and sort of make that whole corner flow in together. And um, it's a nice big cave here. This is for a jungle python, you know, so it's going to end up being a pretty big snake. I will try and um, do the underside of the cave and everything, carve it all out. And um, I'll have the top there just as a bit of a bit of another ledge that it can get up to and, you know, crawl around and do whatever it wants to do. Um, but yeah, that's it at the moment. all expanded under request of the owner uh, i do agree with him that uh, this opening here is a bit too large especially because he's python at the moment it's actually pretty small um so to give him a bit more privacy in there what i'm going to do is um close off this sort of part here and just have a, an opening towards the back there a little bit um still has a massive space inside for when he gets bigger but it just closes off that front makes it a feel a bit more secure for the little little one
all carved out, all taped up, ready for first coat. Now, when you're doing your taping, I always try and leave it just that little bit outside of the foam. That way, if you need to scrape it and give it a bit of a smoother edge, for example, you're not going to be scraping all of your pointing back to the um, back to the foam, and then you'll have to touch it up later. So, you know, um, make sure you spend the time getting that right. And uh, yeah, now the cave. I've um, gone ahead and just taped off a section there, so that when the cave's in place, it's um, the wall's been coated and everything to be behind the actual cave, and um, it'll give it a nice, neat, neat finish. So I'll get stuck into first coat now, and um, yeah. All right, guys, I'm using Dunlop uh, sand-coloured roof tile pointing. Uh, first coat always goes on with a fair bit of water. Uh, not so much that it makes it runny, but just enough that you can spread it fairly easily with a paintbrush. Uh, it's pretty much just a priming layer. You will have a lot of holes. Don't be alarmed. The next two or three coats will co uh, cover that up nicely. This is third coat going on now. Uh, it didn't record the second coat because it's literally exactly the same stuff over and over again. The only difference is when you do the second coat, you use less water in the mix than the first coat. And uh, when you do third coat, it's straight from the tub. Um, now this one here, I had a bit of a play around with colors and stuff on the uh, last, on the second coat, sorry. So I've actually added some sandstone oxide um, into the uh, the mix there, just to change that uh, original sand colour up a little bit. Uh, makes it look a bit... On and added some black into the same mix as what I just finished with. The, the coating is still wet, so you still get a nice blend. But all I'm going to do is go over the, um, mainly focusing on the crevices. Um, but this is going to darken it up and give it a bit more of an aged look. Uh, by doing this while the third coat is actually still wet, you will get a better, better blend and not so much of an overlap. Uh, and it will make it look a bit more... All done and dusted, all smoothed up. Yeah, I've gone through with a darker color you can see here, um, and sort of gone and done a bit of the shading and stuff early, just so it's less to paint. It's quite a big enclosure, and my little airbrush or my little compressor, mind you, might struggle a little bit keeping up with what I want it to do. So thought if I go through and do a bit of the shading now, gives me a chance a bit later on, a bit less stress on my little compressor. So that's it there. Got the cave sitting up there, same deal. Got some shading and stuff done to that already. And um, yeah, next steps to clear up all this tape finally and uh, start making this look like a proper enclosure again. Uh, and paint, obviously. Got to paint it, got to deck it out. <laughs> but yeah, getting there, getting there. Alright, tapes off, 
Everything's looking nice and neat in there. All the edges are nice and neat. Around the cave's all good. And uh, the color has dried up pretty good. Uh, even though this, this camera doesn't really do it justice. The LED lights play with it up there. But uh, it's time to throw a bit of, just a little bit of paint uh, at this one. Because like I, I did the shading and stuff, part of the shading and stuff before. Um, so this is my repertoire of paints and all sorts of different stuff to do what I got to do. Now, um, I use these, I pick these up from one of those little cheap shops that you find. Uh, they're just great for mixing, uh, storing paint after it's been mixed. But to do with my airbrush, which is this little guy here, and this is my little compressor. I bought these as a kit from eBay um, but yeah these little jars here this is just water mixed in with these various uh, acrylic paints and whatnot uh, I'm just gonna have a bit of a play with the greens and stuff uh, the dark greens tend to go really dark like you you barely see them so I'm gonna go with the light probably uh, and then I'll probably end up mixing some light green into this white one I've got here and trying to get a bit more of a pale sort of uh, lichen sort of colour. Uh, and I might even try and lighten this one up, just have a bit of a play. Uh, and the orange is going to be a bit of a play as well, so we'll just see what happens. Uh, then I've got various size brushes and things. Um, this, some of them I just use for mixing, like that one there is just my mixing brush for the tubs. Um, these little tiny ones here, that's what I generally use to go back over and do some black washes in the crevices and things like that on certain certain builds. Um, and then obviously some water and the spray bottle there, that's just to um, help get a little bit of water in to clean the guns out after every every colour. So I'll um, set these up and start adding this stuff here into that stuff there, see what we can come up with. video took a bit to come out uh, it's been probably three or four weeks since I actually started this one um, I just had a lot of uh, family commitments and work commitments so it sort of put a halt on it and I just want to uh, say thank you to Graham the owner of this tank for being patient um, but uh, it's come out pretty good I'm pretty stoked with the way this one turned out and um, yeah I'll, I'll post some photos up on um, on my Facebook uh, page so go and check that out Cam's custom backgrounds uh, give it a like follow the page um, hit that sub subscribe button any part 
or aspect of the builds that you would like to see something a bit more in detail, just shoot me a message through Facebook and um, or leave a comment below. The next video that comes out um, in the next couple of days, I'd say, is going to be um, a teardown and rebuild of my Northern Spiny Tail Gecko's enclosure. It's a, uh, a bioactive tank I put together uh, probably close to 12 months ago now. Uh, it was the first one I ever did. Did a few things uh, not wrong, but not ideal. So, um, yeah, I want to change it up a bit. And, um, yeah, I'll bring you guys along and film it. And I'll do a bit more in-depth of how do we do a bioactive enclosure. Uh, when I did my waterfall one, the, I sort of just skipped over a fair bit of how you actually do it. So this one here, I'll go into a bit more detail. And uh, I want to try and put a drainage layer, uh, a drainage pipe, like um, my good mate Luke from Beach of Scaly Beasts. He started doing it on a few of his tanks, and I think it's a, it's a great idea. So I'd drag that on, guys. I'll, um, I'll catch you on the next one, hopefully in the next few days. And... Yeah, leave a comment down below and like and subscribe and I'll catch us after.